So today we're going to talk about wireframing your product in Whimsical. And so I'll walk you through, kind of show you what we're going to build today. I want to talk a little bit about what lo-fi design is, and we're going to look at some lo-fi tools, and then I'll do an overview of Whimsical. We'll jump in and we'll build, and then uh, hopefully we'll have some time at the end for a little bit of Q&A. So yeah, if you're joining us on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date, stay up to date on these uh, future videos from our team. And if you're joining us on Zoom, uh, be sure to connect with us um, on Twitter, Instagram, uh, Dribble um, for upcoming events. So what will we build today? Um, Squad Up, it's an app that brings recreational athletes together to play in leagues or pick up games. Um, I'll be walking you through kind of the, just the beginning ideas or the beginning kind of wireframes for this idea. And if you follow along and, and uh, watch our um, videos coming up, you'll get to see this, this app takes, uh, take shape as we work, uh, work on it through Figma and as we also launch a, uh, a, a landing page for it uh, using Webflow. So be sure to tune in and, and follow those along. So, so why lo-fi? Why start your product in, in lo-fi? Um, so you know, lo-fi design specifically is what we're talking about. And so thinking of lo-fi design as like kind of a zoomed out version of Google Maps, you know, it's like you can see more context. So there's state boundaries and major cities and highlighted geographical areas, but there's not like every person on the road, you know, every car on the road, every person on the street, every sign. We're, we're looking at just the high level ideas, the high level view to get things started. And so, um, you know, it allows you to take those abstract ideas that maybe you have written on a napkin or you have, you know, in a, in a Google Doc or a Notion Doc, um, or maybe it's just an idea that you have in your head um, or ideas from your team and start to put those ideas out there and start to uh, help them to take shape. Um, Lo-fi design also allows you to bring everyone with you. So there's you know, whether it's you choose a paper, the paper route, or if you do digital, uh, lo-fi design has this low barrier to entry. So you're allowing everyone on your team to contribute, no matter their comfort level uh, or their experience um, with, with drawing. You'll find that um, some of your best ideas come from folks on your team who might say they can't draw. Uh, and so um, the digital tools we'll be discussing today will allow um, your teammates, um, no matter their experience, the ability to jump in and, and um, contribute. And so, and it's also, it's about speedy iteration. So, you know, in the beginning, a lot of your ideas are just very rough and you don't want to go straight into high fidelity design and spend a lot of time dialing in details when the idea isn't really formed well uh, in the first place. And so um, lo-fi design allows you to make speedy iterations, test, make changes and not, you know, and it's also a lower barrier to entry, like I said before, but also it's a cheaper, it's, it's, a, it's a much more economical way to go about um, getting your ideas kind of short up. Um, there are a lot of tools in this space today. Um, these are some of the tools that we use at Headway, uh, Lucidchart, Miro, Balsamic, uh, and Whimsical, which I'll talk about today. Um, Miro is one of the tools that we use in conjunction with Whimsical uh, quite a bit, but these are just kind of four uh, examples of tools that you could use um, that can help you to um, take your idea from, you know, kind of a napkin sketch or just an idea in your head to something digital that you can share. So like I said, we'll focus on Whimsical today. Um, you can sign up at whimsical.com. Uh, you know, Whimsical is a web-based application, so it doesn't run uh, or it doesn't require a software download or updates to run it. It's all in the web. So you can bring all of your teammates in, no matter if they're on a PC or a Mac, if they're on an iPad, uh, and they can join. Uh, as long as they have a modern browser and an internet connection, they can start collaborating with you on those ideas. Um, so this is a really good example of that kind of uh, team project build. This is um, you know, four quadrants where we have um, some UI bits over here on the left, and then we had like some blank iPhone screens. And so what we did here was this is a, a designer, a project manager, a developer, and a client all in the same whimsical doc, and each of them basically dropping their ideas um, onto each of these phones for how they think these screens should should look for this particular for this particular product. So this is a really good way to bring all different perspectives and viewpoints uh, onto the same page, literally, and get their ideas on the board. And no one's really required to draw. All you have to do is just be able to drag and drop and kind of organize information. And so that's just one example. Um, Whimsical comes with a whole lot of, of different things that you can uh, use, different tools uh, to get your ideas mapped out. So um, we use it 
uh, for UX flows. We use it for project pipelines. Uh, we use it for product wireframing, which is what we'll talk about today. And there's a whole library of templates that you can jump into that inside of Whimsical that uh, you can tackle all of your ideas with. So, and then once you're done with that, you'll have a fully shareable, um, you can share ideas basically, either you'll have a board or you can share individual slides or individual pieces of whatever it is that you've mapped out. You can use those um, in presentations, you can send those to developers and designers uh, or whatever you'd like. So let's build real quick. Let's jump over to Whimsical. So this is, a, once you sign up for whimsical.com, uh, at whimsical.com, you'll, you'll see this, this will be your dashboard. And what you'll see here is at the top are kind of those four, uh, these are four main areas where you can kind of jump into a project and start to build. And um, they also have some templates and then you can set up folders. They, uh, they set you up with some uh, kind of some starter projects to get going. And then over here on the left, you'll be able to organize all your projects as you get, as you get going. So um, I'm just gonna start with the wireframe project. Oops, that's weird. There we go, <laughs> that was weird. All right, so um, we'll go ahead and we'll call this one Squat Up. And actually, let me go back. Let me fix something really quick. It looks like we have, make sure we're good. I'm gonna bring this one out, there we go. We use our test one. So what I like to do is I like to create, um, I like to take what I may have in like a Notion doc or if it's from a Google doc or if it's, you know, just whatever maybe the project brief came to came to me in. And I like to, to, to drop a sticky on the board that kind of reminds me about that project. So for Project Squad Up, I have this kind of short description of, you know, it's a mobile app that brings recreational athletes together to play in leagues or pickup games. And I know I need to start with an onboarding screen, some account creation screens, and then some of those first event screens. And so this is a nice way to bring, you know, just, just those, those details you need to get started. And then your team could come in here and actually add comments and uh, kind of help build out kind of those initial ideas. Uh, just, that's just one method. So, so what we'll do real quick is um, we'll go ahead and I'm going to, let's actually choose one of these squares, uh, I wanted to sh show you real quick too, here on the left, you can switch between those four different jumping off points at any time, and you can pull different elements from those specific areas to build whatever it is that you're building. So it's really nice to be able to interchange or mix up, mix in those different uh, different elements from each type of um, type of uh, project here. So we'll just choose, I'm gonna choose wireframe to get started. I'm sorry, flowchart. And I'm going to choose one of these boxes here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, type out those three, those three main areas that we're going to build inside. So first will be um, onboarding. And then we're going to shift drag, which you can, which helps you to, you can duplicate. You can also just uh, right click and, or I'm sorry, you can click on, whoops. You can click here and duplicate as well from this you can also format this text. You have all these different tools that kind of pop up that allow you to format, change color, and all that as well on the, each one of these tiles. So we're just gonna duplicate these. And so I have onboarding, I have my account creation, and then I have like those kind of, we'll just call them our event screens. And each of these will be linked to each other. And so you may already have something kind of like this when you get going to, like you might, go into Whimsical and create this, this initial flow, and then you can build onto that flow with wireframes below. So we'll just, we'll just treat this as our initial, our initial flow for the project. All right, so I have those three there. Now I'm gonna, now I wanna switch to, back to my wireframing mode, and I wanna grab a frame. And so with these frames, you can use um, a window for like a website if you wanted to, and just kind of start to build your landing page or your website in, into that. Um, you can choose uh, iPhone screens as well, Android screens, tablets, or just use a plain box. Um, we'll use the iPhone X for our project today. And I'm gonna label this uh, onboarding one. And so the cool thing about these, these uh, wireframing, uh, basically these little templates is that uh, for the phone, for example, you can add the keyboard, you can look at it in landscape mode. You can turn it off. You can you can change the background color. You can customize these these boards however you like. Um, and so there's other options here. But we'll go ahead and we'll just start with 
this first board and grab some UI bits to start building out that first screen. So um, over here on the left, you see all of these elements that kind of help you to get started. Um, you can you can drop in any of these at any time and just kind of build out. So what I want right now, I actually just want to start with some text. I'm just going to type in. I don't have a logo yet. And again, we're keeping this very lo-fi. So we just want to have everything just kind of on the page and we're not getting too deep into the details. I'm going to go ahead and grab some lorem ipsum, drop it in and maybe center it. And so now I have this logo and a short description. So you might view this as like an initial onboarding screen uh, to get you started in the app. So maybe the first time you download the app, this is, this is that screen. And so let's add a little bit of navigation. Go down here. You can also you can also just at any time you can just like search. So if I want a button, for example, I'm gonna grab this button, drop it in, and I'm gonna say, let's add a skip button for for first. Let's go ahead and say we're gonna have a skip button, and then let's go ahead and let's get a circle. We'll add some pagination in here. Change that color up a bit. You can also change from like dotted outline to solid outline to just no outline at all. So you can go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we have this little dot for some pagination. I'm just gonna dupe that a couple of times. And again, I'm just hitting shift to drag, um, alt shift drag, and then duplicating those. So now we have some pagination and we have the skip button. We can select all of those and we can group them together so we can then move them out around as one element within uh, within our wireframes. We can also go in and we can group these together. That way we have some control over those individual elements. And then we can like select elements and align them. So if we select this element here, here we'll get some alignment tools. And so we can align these center vertically, for example. So, so now we have the beginnings of what could be an onboarding screen and we'll just leave it at that. And let's go ahead and let's duplicate that one more time. Change the name to two and then let's duplicate it again and change that to three. And what we'll do on this last screen is we'll say, um, and we'll say get started. And we'll just align that button there. And so now we have these, you know, we have these three screens for our onboarding. And we're just gonna leave it at that. You know, we can these again, we're just kind of getting our basic ideas out onto the screen so that we can start to shape this and, and kind of go forward. So I'm gonna take these two now and I'm gonna move them along down the path. And so now I have my onboarding screens here along with my wireframe uh, or along with my flow at the top, and I'm gonna move on to the next section. So move down here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab, duplicate that. We're gonna rename this to count one. And so this will be like our initial email, sign up, enter your password, create account screens. I'm gonna go ahead and move this up here. And we're gonna say your email. As you're dragging around, you'll get these nice uh, markers that help you to align things to the board if you want as well. We're just gonna leave that lorem ipsum. We might have some like introductory text or whatever. I'm gonna get rid of the pagination and I'm going to, let's see here, we're gonna add an input. So let's go text input. Get that in there centered and so on the text inputs you're going to have a few different um, options you can make large medium and small uh, inputs you can add a label uh, you can also add icons into these so you could you know let's say arrow you can add an arrow into this you know we could add um, we could change that up and say we want uh, let's see let's say add a user you know we can use there's all these different kind of baked in icons that you can use uh, to help set up your, your ideas. So we'll go ahead and add the at, okay? So you said this could be your email, and then we can also switch between states. So we can start with a focus state, we can start with, an, we can have our error states in there, and we can do a disabled state, and we'll just do normal for now, and then we'll add a place where it will be like your email. 
And then let's go ahead and add a button. Just drag that over there. So select both of those, make sure they're aligned good, but that's about it. We're gonna say, we're gonna say next on this screen here. And let's go ahead and turn the keyboard on so that we can signify that when you hit the screen, the keyboard should pop up and you should be able to drop in your email. All right, so I'm gonna dupe this and we're gonna go to, we'll just, this one here, we'll create password. Should center, we can also set these to, so that they stay centered when we type. So I should probably do that. And we're gonna change that icon to a lock. Or we could use an eye. If you want the visible or not visible, do that. And be your password or create password. Enter password. And then let's move over to our third screen, which could be like, yeah, maybe, maybe add your name. Maybe that icon is, you know, maybe it's a user or maybe it's a, let's see if there's anything like that here. And maybe it's nothing at all. Maybe we remove it. We just have that, right? So now we have these three account creation screens. We could go further into this. We could create our error states. We could create all those things that we want to put into our initial account creation. Uh, but we'll just move on and move over to our next section, which will be event screens. So the event screens is gonna be, you know, for this product, we go back to our description, a mobile app to bring recreational athletes together to play in leagues or pick up games. Uh, not a whole lot to go on with, but we're gonna, we're gonna try it out and see what we get. Go ahead and say, uh, this will be our event, events one. And this is what we'll probably wanna um, start to create that initial sign up, create an event, create a team screen. So we know it. We know that this project um, deals with sports, and so um, we're gonna want to add some kind of way for you to select a sport. So we'll go ahead and we're gonna create first. Let's go ahead and drag a box in here. Forty-eight, forty-eight, and let's add some background to it, and let's get rid of that. And then let's go ahead and let's add an icon. Actually, we have an icons library here. So if we tap on this, we can we can select any kind of icon we want. So we could even say sports. And if we say sport, we'll get all of these different types of sport related icons that we can we can drag and drop in here and use. So we'll go ahead and um, use soccer because it's the best sport ever. JK, all the sports are great. Sports. Soccer is my favorite. So we'll have like, um, we'll have this box selector here and we'll go ahead and we'll, let's go ahead and group this. So now we have an icon and we're gonna dupe this a couple of times across the screen. You can control V as well. So you can control, control C, control V and it'll put it next to you. You can also just drag and drop and it'll put it next to the, put next to the, the uh, the element below. And then we can dupe this whole line here. So now we have, you know, we have up to, to 10 different sports that we're gonna allow you to, to uh, choose. We could go into each one of these and change the icon if we wanted to, to like basketball, to, you know, baseball, football, the other football, running, Etc. Etc. So you could you could create you could create whatever you want. You can sit here and you know you can really dial into details if you wanted to. Um, for this, we'll just again we want to we want to just keep it really low key, low fi, and we'll just continue to move on. So we're going to give this a label. So let's say um, maybe it's select a sport. Do that. So now we have. Sports selector, 
And we'll go ahead and select all that and we'll group that so we can move that entire element around on the board. And let's go ahead and get rid of the keyboard. We don't need the keyboard for now. I'll turn that off. And let's move this down because I think we're gonna, we're gonna need to use this again here in a moment. So next, uh, let's go back to our brief really quick. Uh, looks like we're gonna have the option of leagues or pickup games. So let's go ahead and give you an option to do that. And inside of our elements, we have a couple of things we can use here. We have a drop down we can have, we could drop that in there and we could have those options. We also could use, let's try tabs. We could do tabs, which just could, could represent, you know, like a switcher or anything like that. So let's say, um, let's say pickup game. And then let's duplicate that guy. And let's say, we'll say league, league play. I'm sure I'm spelling that correctly. League play. And then you have states. So you can select the different states for these. So we'll say this one will be the normal state. And this is the selected state. We can also change the color. We can add an icon to this if we want to. We can change the size. We'll leave it at that for now and we'll align these vert in and make sure they're aligned and we're going to group them together so we can move them around at the same time together and uh actually let's push this over here so we can have some balance so all right so now we have this ability to select a sport and then choose either pick up game or league play so then the last thing we want to do is is uh, allow folks to be able to create uh their their event so we'll go ahead and create some labels or some uh, some inputs with labels. So our first one here, we'll just say, oh, let's go title. So be the title of your, um, your event. So enter title. And then let's go to, um, let's add the address. So one, two, three, awesome way. And let's do that again. And let's say New York City, awesome town. And let's add, let's probably add, let me think, we might want to add the date, the date for the event, and maybe the time. And again, this just, we're just getting these ideas out there to get the conversation started, to just get things out of our head onto the canvas and then to share. And then we can come back in here and start to shape this thing with our team or our designers, our developers, whoever we're working with. So let's say um, create event on this button. And so now we have this form. We can actually group all of these together. We could um, we could duplicate this this field and we or this screen and we could say um, events one you know dash uh, when typing or whatever we want to call it and we could actually pull up the keyboard to show that when you hit the focus state keyboard is up and now we're able to type so we can simulate that and then let's go ahead and create what happens when you create your you create your first your first event so we can get rid of get rid of all these cuz now we've created this event we can delete all of these we can also delete this we can delete this and let's just keep one of these icons around let's uh, go ahead and ungroup these so you can see like when you hover over this that everything is kind of in that same group. So you can go up and ungroup all that. So now that you can kind of move these things out around individually. We'll get rid of that stuff. And let's go ahead and bring that icon up a little bit bigger. Um, let's say uh, event details. Drag this down a little bit more here. And then we'll put in what type it is that we had from our pick from our uh, picker there so we'll have a pickup game and let's drop 
the size down a little bit. So we have this pickup game, it's a soccer game. And let's go ahead and since we had people add an address in, let's go ahead and use the, the map placeholder. And we'll pull in a map. So maybe this could symbolize, you know, that address that you had in there um, inside of the uh, the fields here will be presented as a, as a clickable map that can maybe open Google Maps or, or whatever, or Waze or whatever you like. So let's go ahead and now we have, you know, it's a soccer match. It's at this place. What else do we need to pull in? We need to pull in the time and the date. So we'll go ahead and just duplicate this and we'll say it's on this date. And maybe make that type a little bit bigger. And let's do that one more time and say to 7 p.m. So now we have this like, well, let's actually go ahead and do one more thing. Let's add um, the ability for you to, to share this event, All right? So you can pull out the share sheet on your phone and you could share this event with friends. Let's group all that together and let's center it. And then we'll call this our event details one. So now we have um, we have the account or the event creation screens, and then we have what we think could look like, you know, that eventual that that event details page. So we have um, enough to say, you know, from start to finish, we want to start here. This is your onboarding. You're going to create an account and you're going to create an event and then you're going to have this view of events. And we, we could go even further with this and make, make more uh, screens based off of, you know, the ideas that we're getting as we're kind of putting this down. Um, but for now, we're going to we're going to stop on this. And I want to talk about, um, you know, when you're going to share this with folks, you can do a couple other things to kind of just help communicate your ideas. And so one of those things is to go in and annotate using the annotate tool. Um, each of these sections. So like for, for this, we can, we can add a number one. Let's go ahead and, oops, that's weird. Let me back out. We'll just keep it at that for now. For some reason it wants to, it thinks there's five on the board. Um, we'll say here that, um, you know, this is your onboarding screen. And so we'll probably need like three screens, three screens to, you know, describe the product. Um, they're swipeable, they're skippable, and, you know, and they, like, get started, takes you to a kind of creation. However you want to document this. You could, you could do this for uh, screens as a whole or sections as a whole. Um, you could also annotate kind of every little piece of UI around that with this and add those same details in. So for now, we'll just go with this. So three screens to describe the products, swipeable, skippable, get started, takes you to account creation. Uh, we'll duplicate that one, bring it over here, and we'll say, um, you know, enter your email, create a password, enter your first and last that's what those screens are for and again we can we could dial in more details if we wanted to screen here um, we basically want you to be able to create an event you know select sport select game type add uh, address time, date, whatever you'd like. You could also describe, you know, animations, you could describe transitions, you could describe um, different states. So, you know, all, all different things if you'd like to go through here. We'll add one more here and we'll pull this arrow around and say, this one with displays uh, event details, um, clickable map, uh, and then sharing, sharing capabilities. So now we have, we have a high level view. Of
this idea that started out as a sentence and some bullet points, right? So we've taken we've taken that step and we've done it really quickly. And now we have some kind of visual that we can share. We might want to do a couple of other things to just kind of illustrate our idea. We can go in and we switch over to uh, flowchart mode and we can add some connectors to each of these elements. So if we click on the element and change it to an elbow and then just drag it over to the next screen, we can add in our, our different flows that we want to use. So <laughs> they can get kind of crazy. So let's go ahead and straighten this one out a little bit. So now we're, we're saying when you tap the get start button, you're taken to these screens here. We could do this for every individual button. You can also add text to annotate. Go ahead and add this, oops. They get a little noodly sometimes. There we go. Um, and you can add these in and continue to create what you, know, what you think the flow should be um, and pass this on to your team. So this would be creating your event and then let's go ahead and this one here. We'll drag this down, push it there. And as you move your boards around, um, those connectors will stay connected to, to those different, um, those different touch points as well. So, so now we have, you know, a diagram, this idea, this rough idea. And, uh, what we can do now is a couple of things we can, um, we can come in and we can share this. And get a shareable link, we can export it, we can copy the image and paste it somewhere, we can embed it into like a Notion doc, uh, we can print it as well. Um, another thing that we can do is, let me look at it real quick. Um, when you invite your team in, um, there's the ability to add comments. So any of these screens that we see here uh, can be tapped on and then you'll see there's a little comment bubble. And so here you could add documentation or you can just create conversation around particular screens and allow your team to add their feedback and their ideas to those screens um, as you go along. So um, one thing that we do is we when we create something like this here at Headway is we'll go in and we'll actually export um, the frames at 2x and we'll say we'll want the content only. And what we'll do is we can go in and just grab all of these screens like this or we can just select the entire board like so and then head export and say just board, I can say board, which will just, that would actually export the entire flow with all the notes and everything on it. Or you can say, I just wanna export the frames and then it'll allow you to download that to your desktop. And then you would have, um, oops, let's cancel that. It's going through each individual frame really quick. Okay. So then the, those screens will be high res and those high res screens, these wireframes that we made can be taken into Figma or Sketch, Adobe XD, whatever you'd like. And you can start to design off of those screens. You can also drop them into presentations. You can send them via email, whatever you want. You can also drop them on your phone and actually like thumb through them and see how they look and feel uh, in, the, in the palm of your hand on your phone. So um, in our kind of our next part of the series, um, Billy from uh, Headway will actually take this uh, wireframe and he'll take it into Figma and you'll get to see him bring that design to life. So um, so that's it for now. I think we have a little bit of time for uh, Q&A. Uh, any uh, thoughts from the team or anyone? Please uh, hit us up. Um, we did have a comment uh, from, from YouTube. Uh, Jan from Spain was just, he just didn't realize how many options and tools there were within Whimsical. So he just thought this is a really great um, presentation to understand what's all in here. So, yeah, yeah, there's, um, it's cool too because you can you can basically 
swap and use elements from different parts of Whimsical and, and build to your heart's content. So you can pull in sticky notes and um, you can pull in images, you can pull in icons and links, all kinds of things. Um, it really does a great job of kind of getting out of your way and letting you build that thing however you would like it to be built. Yeah, for sure. Clint, are, are, there, are there any resources that like helped you like understand how to take advantage um, of, of Whimsical? Like were there like uh, blogs or anything? Like we could probably share those uh, in, in uh, the follow-up email from this event with the recording and stuff. But um, I'm just kind of curious like how you got to this point or did, you know, did uh, Billy share you this stuff with you? I'm just kind of curious. Yeah, no, uh, this is a tool that was used at my previous employer. Um, they used it basically just for the the wireframing, I mean, for the uh, flow charting. So like there was, um, let me see here, find some examples. Um, kind of like this, we use it f quite a bit for, well, that's fun, let me reload this. <laughs> we used it quite a bit for just, just flows, for boxes, drawing boxes and arrows, you know, UX flows and all that. And, um, but then the tool just continued to get better and better. And these wireframing tools, um, started to expand out, but a lot of it was just from doing stuff like this, like just creating full on flows and, um, having a visual and, uh, you know, using it that way. And it was always, to me, it always seems like the, uh, one of the best tools because it's in the browser, it runs really well. And uh, the tools are just basic enough to let you get started and going. And uh, everybody on the team's able to jump in and just enjoy it. So um, it, that, made, that made the process much better, so. Got it. Looks like we have one question from JJ. He's just asking about other wireframing tools. What would you suggest for app development? Uh, I would suggest this actually. We're actually using this on, um, we're using this on a project we're on right now where we're mapping out all of our flows, we're mapping out um, all of our UX, all of our auth, we're, at, we're wireframing out, out the screens. Um, we're doing a whole lot of things in Whimsical um, before we even get to design the design actually in Figma process. So um, I would say this one, and then um, another one is, like I mentioned earlier, Balsamic is a really good option um, to to put out visuals, like to create screens, to create UI bits without having to draw them. So you can just, draw, you can just drag and drop them onto the board and, uh, and, and get and get to work. So, so yeah. Yeah, and those are, um, let me go back into our real quick here too. So balsamic.cloud is um, the website for that. You know, Miro is also an option for that. Um, we use Miro primarily for uh, thinking through, um, it's, it's a lot of sticky notes. You're thinking a lot about process. You're thinking a lot about ideas. You're thinking a lot about um, feedback from users once you start to work through things. It's how we particularly take notes um, and we, we bring all those notes in to bring, to make, a, to kind of synthesize everything that we're learning from, from testing, so. Awesome. Well, um, we have not seen, I'm not seeing any more questions. Um, all right. Yeah, I think I think we can wrap it up. Uh, I'll just say, you know, thanks everyone for joining us. This this recording will be available to you in your email. We'll also have it on our YouTube channel. So make sure you to head there to check out other content we have. We have stuff on getting started in Figma. Um, we have content on design systems. Um, we also have a presentation coming up in 45 minutes. Another one with John. He'll be talking about Notion and how we kind of document um, document all of our all of our knowledge and, and do project management uh, with our teams. Um, I can actually share a link to that quick if anyone's interested in checking it out. Um, we'll be live on YouTube, but we'll also be uh, on Zoom just like this. Um, there's a link to that one as well. Um, and then, yeah, and then kind of the second part of this series is tomorrow with Billy. I shared the link earlier. And then Monday, Sam and I will be talking about like taking a landing page. So we have this, you know, this this product idea here, wireframed up. We're gonna get a prototype, but then like, how do we kind of get our first handful of customers before our products even launch? Like, how do we get people interested to start testing with us to learn how we can make the product better before we 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 launch it, or even um, before we even spend money de with development, um, or maybe there's um, no code options. And actually, on Tuesday, uh, Andrew will be talking about. Um, no code um, options for your startup or for your app and um, what works, what doesn't work, um, uh, stuff like that. So uh, limitations of no code and all that stuff. Um, 
so yeah so thanks everyone for joining us we, we appreciate appreciate it um and uh we'll follow up soon in your email so uh, everyone take care and have a good one